Good evening and welcome to a special combined morning and evening prayer for Thursday, July 16th. As some of you know, I'm uh, preaching at my daughter's 8th grade graduation tonight, so uh, we have family in town. So I'm going to combine uh, both of our prayer offices into this one, which I will upload as soon as it's done recording and you may look at it uh, at your convenience. And then we'll be back on our uh, regular schedule uh, tomorrow morning for morning prayer on Friday the 17th. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. O Lord, in your strength the King rejoices, and in your salvation how greatly he exults. You have given him his heart's desire, and have not withheld the request of his lips. For you meet him with rich blessings, you set a crown of fine gold upon his head. He asked life of you, you gave it to him, length of his days, forever and ever. His glory is great through your salvation, splendor and majesty you bestow on him. For you make him most blessed forever. You make him glad with the joy of your presence. For the king trusts in the Lord, and through the steadfast love of the Most High, he shall not be moved. Our Old Testament lesson today is from Judges, chapter 16, the continuation of Samson's story. After this, he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up to her and said to her, Seduce him, and see where his great strength lies, and by what means we may overpower him, that we may bind him to humble him. And we will each give you eleven hundred pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Please, tell me where your great strength lies, and how you might be bound that one could subdue you. Samson said to her, If they bind me with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven fresh bowstrings that had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now she had men lying in ambush in an inner chamber, and she said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he snapped the bowstrings as a thread of flax snaps when it touches the fire. So the secret of his strength was not known. Then Delilah said to Samson, Behold, you have mocked me and told me lies. Please tell me how you might be bound. And he said to her, if they bind me with new ropes that have not been used, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and bound him with them, and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And the men lying in ambush were in an inner chamber, but he snapped the ropes off his arms like a thread. Then Delilah said to Samson, Until now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me how you might be bound. And he said to her, If you weave the seven locks of my head, with the web, and fasten it tight with the pin, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. So while he slept, Delilah took the seven locks of his head and wove them into the web. And she made them tight with the pin and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he awoke from his sleep and pulled away the pin, the loom, and the web. And she said to him, How can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times, and you have not told me where your great strength lies. And when she pressed him hard with her words day after day, and urged him, his soul was vexed to death. And he told her all his heart, and said to her, A razor has never come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If my head is shaved, then my strength will leave me, and I shall become weak like any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up again, for he has told me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in their hands. She made him sleep on her knees, and she called a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him, and his strength left him. And she said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. 
And he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. And the Philistines seized him, seized him and gouged out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with bronze shackles. And he ground at the mill in the prison. But the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. Now the lords of the Philistines gathered to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their god, and to rejoice. And they said, Our god has given Samson our enemy into our hand. And when the people saw him, they praised their god, for they said, Our god has given our enemy into our hand, the ravager of our country, who has killed many of us. And when their hearts were merry, they said, Call Samson that he may entertain us. So they called Samson out of the prison, and he entertained them. They made him stand between the pillars. And Samson said to the young man who held him by the hand, Let me feel the pillars on which the house rests, that I may lean against them. Now the house was full of men and women. All the lords of the Philistines were there, and on the roof there were about three thousand men and women who looked on while Samson entertained. Then Samson called to the Lord and said, O Lord God, please remember me and please strengthen me only this once, O God, that I may be avenged on the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson grasped the two middle pillars on which the house rested, and he leaned his weight against them, his right hand on the one and his left hand on the other. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. Then he bowed with all, then he bowed with all of his strength, and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people who were in it. So the dead whom he killed at his death were more than those whom he had killed during his life. Our New Testament reading today is from Galatians chapter 4, a continuation of our readings from Galatians. Brothers, I entreat you, become as I am, for I also have become as you are. You did me no wrong. You know it was because of a bodily ailment that I preached the gospel to you at first. And though my condition was a trial to you, you did not scorn or despise me, but received me as an angel of God, as Christ Jesus. What then has become of the blessing you felt? For I testify to you that, if possible, you would have gouged out your eyes and given them to me. Have I then become your enemy by telling you the truth? They make much of you, but for no good purpose. They want to shut you out, that you may make much of them. It is always good to be made much of for a good purpose, and not only when I am present with you, my little children, for whom I am again in the anguish of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. I wish I could be present with you now and change my tone, for I am perplexed about you. Tell me, you who desire to be under the law, I'm sorry, I lost my place again. Tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not listen to the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by a slave woman and one by a free woman. But the son of the slave was born according to the flesh, while the son of the free woman was born through promise. Now this may be interpreted allegorically. These women are two covenants. One is from Mount Sinai, bearing children for slavery. She is Hagar. Now Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. She corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free, and she is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice, O barren one who does not bear. Break forth and cry aloud, you who are not in labor. For the children of the desolate one will be more than those of the one who has a husband. Now you brothers, like Isaac, are children of promise. But just as at that time he who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit, so also it is now. But what does the scripture say? Cast out the slave woman and her son, for the son of the slave woman shall not inherit from the son of the free woman. So, brothers, we are not children of the slave, but of the free woman. We'll pick up with our Book of Concord reading from the Small Called Articles tomorrow evening. Today our writing is from the writings of Martin Luther. Heavenly Father, we have certainly deserved your punishment. You may surely use the devil, pope, or Muslims as your rod of anger against us, but they want us, together with themselves, to sin atrociously against you. For they are not concerned whether we have disobeyed or slandered you or indulged in all kinds of idolatry and immorality as they do. However, our sin against them is that we preach, believe, and profess you, God, Father, 
your Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one and right eternal God. But where we have denied you, the devil, world, pope, and Muslims would leave us in peace, as your dear Son says, if you were of the world, so the world would love you. Do not do look on us, merciful Father and judge of our enemies. For they really are your enemies, and if they persecute and attack us, so persecute and attack them yourself. For the word that we preach, believe, and profess is the work of the Holy Spirit in us. Muslims want to set their Muhammad in the place of your dear son, Jesus Christ. They slander him and say that he is no real God, and Muhammad is greater and better than he is. If it is sin that we hold you, the Father, your Son, and the Holy Spirit to be the right and only God, and so confess and praise you, then you would yourself be the sinner who calls us that. When they therefore hate, attack, and punish us, they do this to you. Therefore awake, dear Lord God, and sanctify your name that they defame. Strengthen your kingdom that they would destroy in us, and accomplish your will that they would suppress in us. Let yourself not be trodden underfoot because of our sin by those who want to annihilate us in your holy word, name, and work so that you would be no God and have no people who proclaim, believe, and profess you. And today is the day the Lutheran Church commemorates the life of Ruth. Ruth of Moab, the subject of the biblical book that bears her name, is an inspiring example of God's grace. Although she was a Gentile, God made her the great-grandmother of King David, Ruth 4.17, and an ancestress of Jesus himself, Matthew 1.5. A famine in Israel led Elimelech and Naomi of Bethlehem to immigrate to the neighboring nation of Moab with their two sons. The sons married Moabite women, Orpah and Ruth. But after about ten years, Elimelech and his sons died, Ruth 1, 1 1-5. Naomi then decided to return to Bethlehem and urged her daughters-in-law to return to their families. Orpah listened to Naomi's advice, but Ruth refused replying with the stirring words, Where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. After Ruth arrived in Bethlehem, Boaz, a close relative of Elimelech, agreed to be Ruth's redeemer. He took her as his wife, and Ruth gave birth to Obed, the grandfather of David, thus preserving the messianic line. Ruth's kindness and selfless loyalty toward Naomi and her faith in Naomi's God have long endeared her to the faithful and rebounded, redounded to God's praise for his merciful choice of one so unexpected. And we will now join in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, true King of heaven and earth, you promised to your church that the gates of hell would not prevail against her, and you still cause your word to be preached and your holy sacraments to be administered among us. But ah, O Lord, the sins of your people obscure the majesty of your bride. Your holy vineyard is trampled, and your blessed sacrifice stands neglected. Many think themselves strong and despise the life-giving food that you have ordained for your people, for the forgiveness of their sins. Pardon all our arrogance, and do not come to us in wrath to remove the lamp of your word from before our eyes. O Lord, we pray you, visit this vine, which you once established for yourself, and renew us with the sun of your mercy and the water of eternal life. Give us a great hunger for the food of your true body and blood, 
and let all your faithful people ever be found in the Apostles' doctrine, in the fellowship, in the breaking of your bread, and in the prayers. We implore you, O Lord, for our altar, that it may ever be a place where the medicine of eternal life, the forgiveness of our sins, strengthens us in body and soul, that disbelief and impenitence may stay far from all who come there, so that they may not eat and drink to their own judgment. O eternal High Priest, let the fruit of your Spirit grow in us, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and chastity. Cause us to live in holy conduct toward one another, to the glory of your holy name, here in time and hereafter in eternity. For you live and reign with the Father and the same Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Faithful God, you have promised to, to preserve your people and save your inheritance using unlikely and unexpected vessels in extending the genealogy that would bring about the birth of your beloved Son. Give us the loyalty of Ruth and her trust in the one true God, that we, too, might honor you through our submission and respect and be counted among your chosen people by the grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the Holy Spirit, who reign together with you, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night.